Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. To raid or not to raid? That is the question. NVMe solid state drives, is it worth putting them in a RAID 0 for more performance or more throughput? In today's video, we're going to answer that question. I have two Samsung 970 Evo M.2 NVMe solid state drives. Yes, that's a mouthful. 500 gigabytes each. I'm going to show you benchmarks here in just a minute of OneDrive. And then both drives in RAID 0. I have an M2 riser card. You can see the drives installed there. But I also tested to see if it would make a difference if one of the drives was installed in one of the motherboard's M2 slots as opposed to both being on a riser card. And then I'm also going to show you some more advanced benchmark tests that I don't usually show when I do drive reviews because if you're spending all this money and doing NVMe RAID, you might be a more demanding user. So I increased the challenge level of the benchmark to show you higher throughput numbers. Today's video is brought to you by Fanatical. Fanatical is an amazing source for deals on Steam games. All of the keys here are directly sourced from the game studios. This is not a key reselling site whatsoever. I have bought many keys here myself and talked about it in the past. They've got daily star deals, various bundles, some of them available for incredible prices. On the day I recorded this, Monster Hunter World is available for 20% off. Sega has a summer sale going on up to 80% off. And there's a code SUMMER10 for 10% off almost any purchase. You can see here the star deal of the day is Vanquish Bayonetta Pack, 73% off, new deal each day. Now, by the time you watch this video, this deal will have changed, but check out the link down in the description below because there's a new deal every day, latest deals, various bundles. If you like games, if you want deals on games, you've got to check out Fanatical. Now, before we jump to the benchmarks, a quick primer on what rate is and what rate isn't. First of all, RAID 0 is the one that many people think of when they think of more performance. RAID 0 is otherwise known as striping. Essentially, it takes the two drives, it adds their capacity together, providing you in this case a total of one terabyte of storage, and then when you write data to the storage because you get a single drive letter, it splits the data between the two drives. So if you have a two gigabyte file to write, it essentially writes one gigabyte to one drive and one gigabyte to another. It should, in theory, be twice as fast to read and write because it's reading and writing to both drives at the same time. To the operating system, it's just a single letter. Now that's RAID 0. RAID 1 is called mirroring. Mirroring basically puts duplicate copies of the data on both drives. It does use both drives and it does make a single drive letter, but it does not double the capacity. So two 500 gig drives would be a single 500 gig drive to Windows. And then when you write data to it, it's no faster than a single drive because it's writing to both drives at the same time. Now there are other RAID levels. The one you may have heard of is RAID 5, which is parity, but that requires three drives and it's much more advanced. We won't go into it. There's RAID 10 where it's both Stripe and mirror at the same time. That requires four drives, not something you'd probably do with NVMe, but you could. Today, we're just looking at RAID 0. Today, we're just looking at the configuration that boosts performance rather than reliability. Another consideration, if you want to install more than one NVMe solid state drive into a consumer level system, either a Z370 or an X470 system, this is an X470 here in front of me, then you have to keep in mind that there are a limited number of PCI Express lanes. Now, many boards that you might use do have two or three M.2 slots on the board. This particular board here has one up here, and then it's got one down here. However, they are not the same. The top M.2 slot is a PCI Express 3.0 X4 slot, meaning it has four PCI Express lanes. The bottom one only has two. So the drive would run at 50% speed. It will work, but it will not work at its full speed. If you're spending this kind of money, you, you want it to run at full speed. Now, I have a riser card here that supports two NVMe drives, but these are fairly rare. A better solution for most people that cost far less money, install your first NVMe drive in the top slot, and then buy one of these cards. This is $15. I'll link it down in the video description below. It actually has two M.2 slots, but only one is for an NVMe drive. The other is for a SATA drive, like a Crucial MX500 or an 860 Evo M2 M.2 drive from Samsung. It's got a SATA port on the side. It actually plugs a SATA cable literally from the side of the card 
to the SATA port on the motherboard. It's basically just a holder and a power source for the drive, nothing more. But you can leave it blank and just install the NVMe drive on it, $15, and it lets you put two in and you'll get full speed out of both drives. Now, everything I just said about ports applies to the X470 and Z370. If you are on X299 or X399, Skylake X or Threadripper, that doesn't apply. They have enough PCI Express lanes. If they've got three on the board, you can put them all on the board and you'll be just fine. The first benchmark results I want to show you are my standard Crystal Dismark benchmark suite with the single drive over here and both drives in RAID 0 right here. With a single NVMe drive, we've got 2200 megabytes or 2.2 gigabytes per second sequential read speed. A little bit slower sequential write, but pretty close. And then with both drives in RAID 0, we have 3.1 gigabytes per second sequential read speed and just under 3 gigabytes per second sequential write. Now, while it is not a doubling of speed with RAID 0, that's still a fairly healthy jump, nearly a gigabyte per second faster in both reads and writes. So, if you're looking for more performance, case closed, it's faster, correct? Well, not so fast. Take a look at the second line. The second line is 4K random read and random write, Q depth 1, thread count 1. Notice something interesting? There's virtually zero difference. That's because the system has nothing to work with. Trying to read and write just one 4K block at a time, the RAID 0 configuration is virtually identical in performance to the single drive configuration. If you're in a single user environment, if you're just running one or two programs at a time, if you're not having multi-user access or server access or have a bunch of things updating or maybe multiple virtual machines running, this is closer to the real world situation you're likely to find yourself unless all you're doing is file transfers. To be sure, if all you're doing is file copies in large reads and writes, yes, the sequential matters. But in general, most people will not see a large real world performance jump because of those Q depth one thread count one results. Now, if you are in a more demanding environment, take a look at the bottom two lines, Q depth of four and Q depth of 32 in reads and writes. This gives the system much more to work with in terms of saturating both drives. You'll notice that the RAID 0 numbers are a little bit higher than the non-RAID numbers, but not massively so. Even with a Q depth of 32 with four different threads running, it's not a huge difference. In all honesty, unless you really need all the drives to be one drive letter, you may very well be better off having them be single drives because then the system can access them discreetly and you could have one virtual machine or maybe even a half a dozen virtual machines running on one, your programs and other data access running on the other, and then they're completely separate as opposed to trying to share the resources by making them one drive. Now, those are my standard benchmark results. I'm now adding two more benchmark results that are not standard. Q depth of 32 all the way down and 16 threads on the sequential. This is much more of a demanding workload and demonstrates what you would expect to see if you were in a multi-user environment, had multiple virtual machines running that were actually doing something with the drives. Basically, it's a very intense process. Now, most of these numbers are in fact bigger. In fact, the 4K random read and writes with a Q depth of 32, even with only one thread, are massively higher, 400 something megabytes per second versus 70 with just one Q depth. But notice that it's about the same in RAID 0 versus a single drive. The RAID 0 is not adding much to that. The difference is the Q depth, not the RAID count. Now, in terms of random write performance with higher thread counts, 4 and 16, yes, you do get more transfer rate, more performance. It helps, to be sure. Although I would again make the argument that splitting the drives into two standalone drives and splitting your workload separate between the drives, if you have 10 virtual machines running, for example, or 10 different users accessing files, splitting the file access, if possible, within your workload makes more sense. The final note that I'd like to make regarding that level of workload, if you really have that much going on, get the 970 Pros, not the 970 Evos. These are TLC drives, not MLC drives. They have an SLC cache designed to buffer their TLC performance, but the 970 Pros will maintain their performance for full drive writes, whereas these will kind of run out of steam if you do too much writing to them in too short a period of time. And finally, these two charts right here are simply 
the RAID 0 tests between both drives installed on the riser card and one drive on the riser card and one drive on the 4X slot on the motherboard. As you can see, the results are virtually identical. I did verify in both configurations that both drives were running in X4 mode using Crystal Disk Info. But if you install one of the drives on the bottom slot on the board, then it's only running in 2X mode and the numbers won't be as high. If you're gonna spend the money on NVMe drives, make sure you're running in 4X mode. In conclusion, RAID 0 simply makes no sense for the vast majority of people, but there is a way to get better overall performance. Buy the one terabyte drive. Instead of two 500s and rating them thinking, oh, that'll get me more performance, well, in very limited circumstances, just file copies, etc., it will. But the reality is on a day-to-day -day basis, the one terabyte drive is probably faster than two 500s. And the reason for that is because the one terabyte drive has twice as many NAND flash chips on it. These are both TLC drives. They each have an 18 gigabyte SLC buffer. But when that buffer is fully utilized, these drives go from 2300 megabytes per second rated write speed to 600. Once you've actually used the buffer, if you try to do a full drive write, these drives will only write at 600 megabytes per second until that buffer gets flushed to the TLC in the background. The one terabyte drive is rated to 2,500 megabytes per second in its 36 gigabyte SLC cache, twice the size, and 1,200 megabytes per second full drive write. It's essentially these two drives combined into one with one controller without the complexity of actually setting up RAID 0 because it has twice as many NAND flash chips on it. So you can get a lot of the benefits Drive right endurance. It has twice the drive life as standalone as the two separate 500s. It has twice the SLC buffer, twice the TLC write performance, all without the headaches and hassles of trying to install two M.2 drives. And price wise, it's pretty similar in price to buying two of these. So if you want more performance and more space, just buy the one terabyte drive and get most of the benefits with none of the headaches. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Hit the bell notification icon next to that subscribe button if you'd like to actually get notified of my new videos. Otherwise, frankly, YouTube doesn't send out very many notifications. Comments down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought of this video. Links in the video description. Links to everything I showed you here will be down, including this card here if you want to do this, to Amazon and Newegg. Please use those links for when shopping. They do support the channel. They are affiliate links. If you found this interesting, interesting, helpful, useful, informative, or just amusing, I would greatly appreciate it. My link to Twitter, Twitch, and Discord is down there as well. We have a wonderful Discord community, very active with over 1,400 members at the moment. Tech help section, uh, Q&A section, general tech topics, off topic, and a variety of other conversation channels. Please consider checking that out. We'd love to have you. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.